Sometimes it's hard not to fall for a bad boy. The tough, gruff look, the penchant for leather clothing, the sexy way they cut down your family and torture your dog. Talk about swoon. But seriously though, we all love a good villain in video games, as it gives us something to bounce off as a player. They keep throwing up obstacles and enemies, and we gleefully thank them as we attempt to overcome these trials. But some villains really step up their game and become not only absolutely detestable, but almost lovable at the same time. You obviously despise them for the aforementioned dog torture, but you kind of love every interaction you have with them. With this in mind, I'm Jules the Southwest Savage for WhatCulture.com, here with a list of the 10 video game villains who stole our hearts. Number 10. Daddy. Kicking this list off with a relative newcomer to the whole I'm a freaky deaky maniac club, Daddy aka Jack Baker is a veritable tour de force of crazy hillbilly and sharpened shovels. But it's his persistence and incredibly funny dialogue when he's chasing the player that make him at once ridiculous and utterly terrifying. Highlights include bursting through a wall while cackling Daddy's home and earning himself a permanent father of the year trophy by dealing with his son's insubordination by cutting off his arm. His face might as well be printed on all the number one dad mugs from now on. Number 9. M. Bison First off, his dress sense is snappier than what he does to next with those vicious overhead boots, so that's an immediate plus. What makes Bison so great as a villain is that he treads the line between comic book baddie and being an utter bastard so well. His plans to take over the world are often ludicrous and his god complex is so overwhelming that it's impossible not to be in awe of his ego. But really, the reason that I love this blood red body bagging Baron is because of his mastery of the insult. Here are just some of his best. I'm happy you are alive, you are still capable of feeling pain. What a limp pansy foe you are. If I'm so scary to you, why not run home to mummy? Your corpse shall make excellent grist for the Shadaloo mill. Now, admittedly, I had to look up what grist is. It's actually a material that can be ground into flour, but my God, what a burn. Number eight, Kane. And now a little nod to one of the best PC games of my youth. Kane from the Command & Conquer series is not only my style icon, but also one of the most brilliantly over-the-top sociopaths in existence. He's got the whole package, charisma, ruthlessness, and a legion of zealot followers who believe he's a supernatural being who came to Earth thousands of years ago from space. No, you didn't hear me wrong, because this slap-headed warhound is pretty much immortal and has been orchestrating wars across the globe for thousands of years, including being an influencing factor on Stalin! Now what's not to love about that? Oh, and he also has a collection of dinosaurs as shown in the secret missions for the PC version of the original game, so that's also pretty f***ing swell. Number 7. Officer Tenpenny Officer Frank Tenpenny. The name alone should conjure up past memories of how much this guy hounded CJ in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. One of the most crooked cops in any GTA game, his list of crimes is almost too many to recount. He's akin to a black hole of corruption, pulling in people to work for him as drug smugglers, murderers, and bodies to take the fall for his actions. He's a grade A bona fide scholar of being an utter dick, and he wears this title with pride. From the opening moments of the game to the close, not an action goes unnoticed by this guy and his moustache. So why is he on this list of loved lowlifes? Well, two and a half words. Samuel L. Jackson, who voices this psychopathic police officer with such zest that even as he's threatening to frame you for the murder of another cop, you can't help but love him for it. Number six, Kefka. It was tough to pick from the bad boys of the Final Fantasy franchise, as you've got an obvious choice in Sephiroth. But I think Kefka has the edge on him due to not only his infectiously psychotic laugh, but because he's a villain who genuinely seems to enjoy being a monumental prick. The psychotic clown oozes hatred for everything and everyone in existence, and only seems truly happy when he's either destroying something or when the world is descending into chaos. But therein lies the reason why fans love him so much, for his utter contempt for life actually ends up with him succeeding in his plan to become a god. So few other villains can claim to have actually gone through with their plans, and none can say they've done it with such style. Number 5. GLaDOS A good sense of humour will get you a long way. For me, it's helped me bed women up and down the whole of England, smallest town's fish and chip shop late last Thursday night. It can also help create a character who will make you piss yourself even as they're feeding you into an open furnace. Enter GLaDOS, a beautiful piece of machinery with a fantastically morose sense of humour. Whether she's making fun of the fact that you're an orphan or sassing you while being mounted to a potato, everything she said is laced with poisonous wit. But there's more to this mad AI than knock-knock jokes as she single-tubedly killed nearly all of the staff at Aperture Science and has been running the company ever since, testing, testing, and testing some more for good measure. 
Number 4. Dr. Neo Cortex Crash Bandicoot is a game, a game which I love. But not for this spinning rodent, but because of this guy, Dr. Neo Cortex. Throughout the series, he's been the primary antagonist and sometimes companion to the shirtless Aussie Edge Ferret. And while he's often terrible at stopping Crash from dismantling his plans, he never fails to elicit a smile from gamers as he does so. His presentation is reminiscent of a Saturday morning cartoon villain. He's absolutely dastardly in his intentions, but he's just so silly. His comically huge head and incompetent goons mean that you can never really take him seriously, but that just adds to his charm. Number 3. Handsome Jack this guy, this f***ing guy. I can't tell whether I've got the biggest man crush on the fake-faced Fuhrer of the Hyperion Corporation or whether I'd gladly be the one to choke him to death. He's just that good at polarizing the player. His interaction with the Vault Hunters is a hilarious barrage of death threats, egotistical bragging and diamond ponies. Then he does something outrageous like killing a key member of the original team or a beloved winged warrior and suddenly your emotions are flipped on their head. You hate him with all of your being and you can't wait to unleash the fury of the bazillion guns available to you into his smug and perfectly chiseled jawline. Number 2. Vass Who doesn't love this guy? He's less like a man with a few screws loose and more like an overflowing bucket of spare parts. Capable of flitting between comedic one-liners and psychotic yelling in an instant means that any interaction with him is incredibly tense. Yet he's so enthrallingly insane that you can't wait until his mohawk head rears itself again. He's the type of guy who'd not only throw his old nan under an oncoming bus, but also chuck a few kids, some kittens and the queen down there as well. And he's a villain that means business. From killing your brother in the opening section to creatively trying to drown you, Vass actually feels like one of the many deadly predators on the island, toying with you until it's time to strike. And number one, Bowser. Bowser is the epitome of cool villains, and on paper he really shouldn't be. He's a giant gross turtle, a deadbeat dad, and playing sports with your supposed nemesis does tend to harm your villain cred somewhat. But you know what, he's still so utterly diabolical in his plans to mess up everyone's day that he deservedly sits at the top of this list. In the past he's turned entire kingdoms into inanimate objects and even went as far as trying to create a whole galaxy in his image. So while despite barely fitting into a go-kart, he's not a chap you want to mess with. He's an absolute goofball with the temper of Peter Austin if he runs out of hobos to stab and he's just the perfect foil to Mario's goody two-shoes attitude. But if you're not convinced, then I present to you Exhibit A. Look at this clip. Look at it! Adorable. And that's our list. Got any more antagonists you adore? Well, let us know about them in the comments section below. And if you want to let me seduce you with my villainy, then come follow me on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. If you enjoyed the video, then like, share, and subscribe for more. As always, I've been Jules for WhatCulture.com, and I'll speak to you soon.